Hello, hello to all you mud rumors. Thanks so much for uh, tuning in today. Um, I just wanted to pop in here and go over some of the basics with our Mako Flux product. Um, we tend to get a lot of questions on application and best practices for this product. So I just wanted to kind of go through and talk about some different examples. And if anyone has any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. I'm happy to answer them live. And if I don't get to your questions live, um, I will definitely go back and check them out in the comments and just type in a comment response. So anything you got, please lay it on me. I'm happy to answer your questions. I'm here to help. So that's why we're doing this here today. So to start out, I just wanted to talk about um, what Flux is. So Flux is kind of a what we would consider more of a mobilizer. It's a glaze accessory. You don't necessarily want to use it independently on anything, but it will produce mobility in glazes that you're layering it with. So we have both a light flux and a dark flux. Um, they come in pints and four ounces. They're both available. And these are products that you're going to want to layer with other glazes. So it works well on top of or underneath other glazes, however you want to do it. Um, something to keep in mind is the more flux you use, the more mobile the glaze will be. So some people are really, really light handed and one coat of flux is not going to produce any mobility, but it will produce a bit of variation. So mm -hmm. as you can see on this sample, that I have here. Um, this is was done on top of cinnabar. So there's light flux on this side and dark flux on this side. There's not a whole lot of mobility happening here. And that's first of all because the glaze that it's layered with is a very, very stable glaze. So that's going to affect the mobility of the flux as well as the application thickness and even the form has something to do with it so you can see here this is a nice shoulder to kind of catch any mobility that might happen and then the glaze the flux product also was only applied not super super thick so that's kind of how flux works on something that does not have a lot of mobility to it this glaze here um, i have another example here of flux on tea dust. So tea dust is going to be a glaze that reacts a little bit more and does produce some mobility. Um, and on this specific um, piece here, the flux was banded on or trailed on with a slip trailer. So it was a pretty heavy application. And you can see how it moved down almost um, past halfway down the wear. So this was light flux that was used on this piece. Um, and then there are some spots of stroke coat as well. This project is posted on our Instagram and our YouTube page uh, if you're interested in that at all. So this is what light flux looks like on a more mobile glaze. Overall, I do find that, uh, that the light flux does have a bit more mobility than the dark flux. So if you do want to produce the same amount of mobility with your dark flux, I'd recommend applying it a little bit heavier or just making sure it's paired with a glaze that does have a lot of mobility. Um, back to the initial sample here. So this piece had the flux applied over top of the other glaze, but let's say I didn't want to have as much as of this light color or this kind of blue color. If I wanted more of the red interaction, I would have definitely just applied this underneath the cinnabar. So that would make the red the primary focus, it would be mobile, but you would still have some of this light variation from the light flux and this kind of blue variation um, from the dark flux. So as far as the way that the fluxes work with other glazes, our dark flux tends to add a blue mobility or even brown mobility depending on what glaze you're layering it with. And the light flux kind of always adds kind of a creamy off-white uh, mobility. So I can go ahead and show you how I like to apply the flux. I have a couple tiles here. I pulled some 
uh, amber quartz as the glaze that I'm going to be using with the flux. But if anyone has a question about a specific glaze, I'm happy to go snag another pint and switch it up and I'll post the results from these um, tomorrow after we have them in the firing. So here I've just got some tiles and I guess I can just sample one of the tiles. I don't have to do both, but I will glaze both of these. So as with any glaze, I'm definitely going to want to shake it up. So give this guy a good shake. And this is a fresh pint, so I got to remove my heat seal. All right, so we've got our fresh pint of flux right here. And I'll typically, I like to use a soft fan brush for any application. Usually with uh, stonework glazes, I'll use our larger soft fan. We have a CB or R, yeah, CB618 or RB140. Those are our larger fan brushes, which I really like to use when I'm applying stonework glaze because I really like to make sure the glaze is applied nice and heavy to ensure a lot of variation and really good coverage. So, but for something that I want a little bit more control with, so something like flux or under glazes or even some low fire glazes, that's something that I would be using uh, my smaller fan brush with because it just like allows me a little bit more control. If I wasn't being as controlled about my application and just plopping it on, the big brush would be the way to go. Then I could get probably more than one coat applied with each plop, which would be really nice. So here we go a little bit about brush loading. So with stonework glazes, again, I do like to apply it pretty heavy. I know I'm using the smaller brush here, but I want to really fully load that uh, fan brush here. Like you see how I'm up past the bristles even. Um, that's just to ensure that this is a really nice plump brush. So I'm going to go ahead and do my first coat of flux here. So, and this, since it's such a small surface, I'm not really going to get a lot of glaze starving happening. But as you can see, it went on really, really smooth. I had no resistance. Like, let's say I would keep glazing it and I start getting that. That is too thin. That's when I want to... Don't mind the hammering, sorry guys. There's a little bit of construction going on outside. but um, So this is when I would want to reload my brush. If your brush is skipping like that or catching on your wear, you need more glaze. So we'll just let this guy dry here a little bit. As you can see, it's still um, setting up. So while that's drying, I can show you guys a couple more examples of uh, different flux projects that I've done. Um, most of these are available on our Instagram as well as our YouTube where we put our stoneware techniques. So feel free to check those out. Um, here I have a sample of raspberry mist with light and dark flux as well as this does have some stroke and coat. So to distinguish between the way that these glazes will interact, well first of all the flux was applied directly to the bisque. So this is kind of how flux interacts when it's underneath the glaze. You can see how it pulls a lot of the glaze colors, but you can still see the flux colors that are happening here. Um, so that's kind of how you can expect it if it's underneath the glaze. Again, if you go back here, this is the it applied on top of a glaze. A little bit less interaction, but you're still getting some nice mobility and variation um, between the glazes. So here we have, right here, I'm just going to show you kind of what each color is here because there's three different products that were applied here using a trailer. So this light part here, this is the light flux. Figure that, right? <laughs> and um, here is actually the Caribbean blue. You can see that nice blue variation happening and it's a really dark pigmented color. So that's how I know that it is the Caribbean blue. And then here, this kind of gray variation that's happening, this is from the dark flux. So here I've just done little bands like this using a trailer, and this is what creates the variation here. So I did one coat with the trailer. It's nice and thick. So that's how you can see we have all this kind of movement that's happening here. If I applied it a little bit thicker, we would have more movement. 
Um, the glaze that's applied on top also is going to affect it. So let's say I'm kind of a thin glazer. Um, that's going to create less movement than if I was a heavier glazer. So this is a pretty typical application of raspberry mist. Like let's say down here, you can see that red, that's nice and thin. So if it was like this on the whole thing, I would not be getting this kind of mobility. But since I do have a bit heavier of application, I do have some nice mobility with this project. Hello friends! Thanks for joining us! Um, so here... This, okay, so this looks like it's dry, so I'm going to go ahead and put my second coat on. So as you can see, it's not all the way bone dry, but it's not shiny at all anymore. So that's how I know I want to put my next coat on. So I'm going to stagger these coats so that when I post the fired picture, you guys can see one, two, and three coats and what kind of mobility is produced uh, from that. So again, I'm going to nice load up my fan brush. It's fully plumped. The glaze isn't trailing off of it, but it's definitely kind of heavy. Heavy here, I don't know. There you go. Um, so we'll do our second coat. It's kind of farther over than I would want it to be, but we are all good. All right, so our second coat, as you can see again, that went on nice and super smooth. So we'll just set this down to dry. And I'm going to do the same thing with the Dark Flux. Um, and fire both tiles with the amber quartz unless someone else has um, a glaze request for the flux. And then I'll post the images of the light flux and dark flux results tomorrow. So while that's drying, I'll go ahead and pick out another sample here to kind of talk about. So this piece here has a, hand, a lot of different glazes on it actually. So this has uh, macadamia, Norse blue, um, lavender mist, light, and dark flux. So there's a lot going on here. All of the variation that happens here, this was applied underneath macadamia. So I basically just took um, one of our fan brushes into, ras or into lavender mist, Norse blue, light flux, and dark flux, and just kind of globbed it on. And I did like two coats of that, so it was really nice and heavy because I really did want this to have a nice flowy uh, finish to it. So here I'm just going to point out what colors are what, just so you guys can get an idea, again, how these how the this product interacts with our glazes. So here we have, so this, as you can see, this is the lavender mist. It's a little bit of purple that's going on here. And then we do have our Norris blue. And then the fluxes are pretty clear in this one particular because we have our light flux right here. You get that beautiful light kind of off-white drip that's happening here. And it's picking up other glazes as well into it, which is why I really, really like applying the glaze in this way. So then again, here we have our dark flux. So to this combination, it's going to add a little bit more blue which could confuse it a bit with the Norris blue, but you can see because you're getting these streaks and like rivers of glaze movement happening, that's how I know that this is the dark flux. So this is a fun, awesome technique where you're layering all sorts of different glazes and feel free to do this a similar technique to glazes that you have in house. I love experimenting like this. I always think it's really, really beautiful. I'm kind of a sucker for really, really runny glazes. So that's kind of my style. Anything like this though, as you can see, we, I got dangerously close to the bottom here. Um, so an experiment like this, I would definitely recommend putting on a kiln brick or if you have a little cookie or something to raise that up so that it's not fusing to the shelf in case you are a little more liberal with your glaze. Um, and then our final example here, I have this bowl that I did with um, copper jade, light flux, and jaded. Um, I love the way that light flux looks with the um, with the copper jade because instead of just producing a white color you're getting this beautiful golden variation and I think that really matches very very nicely with the copper jade background. So this project in particular, it was done with a slip trailer, creating arches, and then doing dots of stroke and coat. So the stroke and coat kind of 
held up and moved down with the flux in this project and created this lovely pattern in this bowl here. So I do have a question from Karen. Thank you for the question. Actually, this has been coming a lot up a lot on Mudroom, so I'm super excited that you asked that. Um, so Mako Flux and Mako Cascades are really similar products, but they're just made for different firing ranges is essentially the best way to think of it. So Mako Cascades is a low fire product that is often used with elements kind of to create a bit of mobility. And then Flux is a mid-range product that is going to be used with stoneware glazes to produce mobility. Now that's not to say that you cannot take our Mako Cascades up to Cone 6 if you have them. Um, we haven't seen many ill results with it, so you, they definitely, the Mako Cascades work well layered with stonework glazes at Cone 6, Elements at Cone 6. It's a really, really versatile product, but keep in mind, since it's a mobility product for 06, when you're taking it up to that higher temperature, it's going to produce even more mobility. So I would definitely expect it to be a little bit more mobile than the fluxes at this temperature, but they are going to kind of behave similarly in the sense that it's like a glaze added or like a glaze um, enhancer or additional a glaze accessory, I guess would be a good way to put it just to kind of enhance the mobility of those glazes. Um, all right. So this guy is setting up a little bit. We're still kind of wet here. So um, I'll go ahead and talk about um what glaze you're using with the flux. So I did kind of touch on this a little bit, talking about glazes that are less mobile, are gonna, or like more stable glazes such as cinnabar, that's gonna create um, less movement than if I were to use a more mobile glaze like this. This is macadamia, this is gonna be more reactive, create a lot more movement. But specifically, when you're thinking about using flux with matte glazes, matte glazes are very very stable glazes typically um, so those glazes are going to be glazes that do not produce a lot of movement so if it's a glaze that has a matte finish but it breaks over texture um, that's a glaze that's matte but it is mobile but if you have like a flat matte glaze that's going to be something that doesn't produce a lot of movement as well as again the, these really stable gloss glazes and then our gloss glaze line as well which is um, stoneware SW501 to 510 those glazes they'll perform similarly in a sense that they're very very stable and are not going to be producing a lot of movement so and then lastly I would like to talk about um, using it with crystal glazes so crystal glazes already kind of have some of them have a little a little bit of a mobility enhancer built in because the crystals are going to be something that's melting. Um, and so if you layer a mobility product with something that's already melting, that's going to make it even more mobile. So if you think about glazes that have melty crystals like winter wood is a great example, that's going to be something that moves a lot. Um, and then as far as our regular stoneware line goes, like if you're using uh, copper ore or mere black, satin patina, those are glazes that are really, really going to get a lot of movement uh, when you add flux to it. So here we go. We're going to do our third coat. Again, just putting this guy on nice and heavy. With flux, I like to be a little bit heavy handed. Again, I'm really partial to flowy glazes. And we have a whole bunch of kiln bricks that we just use um, as extra, or like old kiln bricks that we use to kind of protect our kiln shelves. So I get an uh, opportunity to, to experiment a little bit more um, with that. Um, let's see, I have a couple more questions here. Awesome, glad that I answered your question, Karen. That's great. And then let's see, Leanne said, would flux work well on coarse black clay or is it better on a smoother clay surface? Um, really flux doesn't seem to really react negatively when you put it on different clay bodies. So I would definitely say that you're good to go 
using it on a coarse black clay, I think one thing to keep in mind would probably be what glaze you're layering it with. So um, coarse black clay, I would imagine, is a little finicky when it comes to glazes that work really well with it. But if you do have a glaze that works well with it and you did want to add some mobility to that glaze, you could definitely layer some flux um, with that. So hopefully that answers your question there. Um, and I think that is pretty much everything. Um, I hope that I answered your guys' questions, and if you have more questions and think about them later, please add them in the comments. I will be waiting patiently to help you guys out. Um, as far as this goes, I'm going to let this dry, and I'm going to apply three coats of amber quartz in a similar manner as I did apply the flux. So you saw how nice and thick I applied that glaze. Um, that's how I'm gonna apply the amber quartz. So I'm gonna do three coats of that on this tile and then I'm gonna fire this to cone six and then I'll show you results tomorrow as well as I'll do the same for the dark flux so you guys can kind of see a side by side of how these products work underneath the same glaze. Um, I could also do uh, an additional tile with the flux on top of it so you guys could have four tiles and see how it works over and under all of them. So actually I will definitely do that because I think it's a great example. Um, so yeah, thanks so much to everyone that tuned in today. I really, really appreciate it. And again, please ask questions, check out our sweet new website. It is super, super informative about all of our glazes. So definitely take that, give a look to that and then if you liked any of these projects that I showcased today check out our YouTube channel it's just Mako Colors as well as our Instagram so thanks again guys and take care happy glazing